2000, some textbooks were using pictures of a four-winged fruit fly as evidence for the power of mutations. Normally, fruit flies have two wings, and then behind their wings, they have little things called balancers that move very rapidly as they fly. It helps them to uh, maintain their stability. But a, a very good geneticist uh, many decades ago, Ed Lewis, found that by combining three mutations in a fruit fly embryo, he could produce a fruit fly with four wings instead of two. Very dramatic. The pictures are, are quite striking. The problem is uh, the balancers are gone because they've been transformed into normal looking wings, but they're not normal because they have no muscles attached to them. So the four winged fruit fly has two working wings and two effectively dead wings. It'd be like a, a small private airplane with an extra pair of wings dangling from its tail. You know, it's not a, an advantage. And in fact, the four winged fruit fly has trouble flying has trouble mating, and cannot survive outside the laboratory. So in, in terms of evolution, it's a total dead end. And yet it's used to show students that mutations can indeed produce the anatomical uh, novelties that are needed by evolution, when in fact they can't, as far as we know. Um, one interesting thing about the four-winged fruit fly is it's the only one of the ten icons I wrote about that has become more common in textbooks since I wrote the book in 2000. Uh, I think I inadvertently tipped off some people that, wow, this is really a good picture. Let's put it in our textbook. And so it's actually more common now, as I point out in Zombie Science, than it was in 2000. The four-winged fruit fly is, in effect, propaganda for uh, the power of unguided. Actually, it's not even a good example of unguided mutations because three carefully engineered mutations had to be combined in a single embryo to produce the four-winged fruit fly. So it's not just an accidental mutation that produces it, but yet it's used as evidence that accidental mutations in DNA can in fact produce the novelties that evolution needs. It's not true. A book that came out in 2007, uh, Defending Evolution, contained a drawing of an 18-wing dragonfly and a four-winged dragonfly. And the book argued that the same sorts of mutations that could change the number of wings in a fruit fly could also change the number of wings in a dragonfly and explain why uh, an ancient, extinct, 18-winged dragonfly might have evolved into the modern four-winged dragonfly. Well, two years after the book came out, the author was in a debate with Discovery Institute fellows Stephen Meyer and Rick Sternberg, and Rick pointed out that there never was an 18-wing dragonfly. And the author acknowledged this, the author of the book, and said it was just a thought experiment. Fine, that was in 2009. Then in 2013, this same guy put out a textbook, a biology textbook, with the same drawing of the 18-wing dragonfly and the four-wing dragonfly. And that book, in 2013, claimed that the 18-wing dragonfly was a real fossil was a real animal. So in just four years, the 18-wing dragonfly evolved from a thought experiment into a real fossil, such as the power of zombie science. Mm -hmm.